All right. <laughs> I'm Andy Warfield. I'm a CTO and co-founder at Coho Data, and this is my second attempt uh, at today's V Brown Bag uh, talk. Um, this is a new structure for me in this talk. It's the 12-minute version. Uh, I'm much better at a one-hour version, so I'm going to try and say interesting and meaningful things in, in exactly 12 minutes. So Coho makes a incredibly high performance, uh, incredibly cost effective and easy to manage and deploy storage system. Uh, the talk that I'm going to do, split into two parts over the next two days, is, is kind of about some of the technical end of what we do. In today's talk, I am going to tell you about a bunch of things that I worry about with my engineering team and that you as a customer should probably know about but not really worry about. And tomorrow's talk, I'm going to talk about why building storage with Flash today is different than building storage with Flash or any kind of non-volatile memory even five years ago, and how you should be asking for different things than vendors have trained you to ask for over the past five years with products. And so I'm going to start the talk by talking about racks and racks of gear. Um, maybe not the kinds of racks or gear that you were thinking about, but when I was uh, a lot younger before having uh, uh, three kids, I, I used to spend a lot of time rock climbing. And I think about building enterprise systems uh, in a really similar way to the way that, that I used to think about rock climbing, which is that there's this problem. You have to get up some, some rock face. Uh, you have a bunch of gear to do it with, and you have to choose and apply the gear that you have appropriately uh, to get up that rock wall. Right? And, and building systems is very similar, except that the pieces that we build systems with up until the last few years haven't really changed. We've had disks, we've had CPUs that kind of get faster at a relatively slow rate, we've had memory and stuff like that. But non-volatile really kind of changed that. It was as if you know, there were these announcements, and this is the most recent with the 3D crosspoint, but before this we had PCIe flash, before that we had SSDs, that changed the way that we think about building systems. And for an engineering team building systems, it's really important that you have a detailed, detailed understanding of, of the impacts of these things on the systems that you're building. So to put that in a climbing perspective, it's like suddenly there was this new type of gear, right? There was this new type of stuff that I could use to, to solve the problem. And so I wanted to, in this talk, just reflect on a few lessons that uh, the team and I at Coho have had over the last few years of, of working uh, with, with non-volatile memory. So here's, here's the first one. And I've, I've talked about this before, but I'm going to try and be a little bit more concise about it. Non-volatile storage, whether it is Flash uh, on PCIe, increasingly even Flash on, uh, on SAS or SATA, or emerging non-Flash technologies like uh, the Crosspoint technology or, or other things like that, are very different than any storage that we've worked with in the past. Right? Spinning disks are very slow. Even original Flash was, was very different to work with than this. And the speed of this Flash really, really fundamentally changes the way that you have to approach building a storage system. Now, people have been saying stuff like this about Flash for ages, right? This is maybe not uh, the, the newest drum to beat, but I'd really like to emphasize this point. So this is a slide that Intel's networking team used at the DPDK summit uh, last year. And so DPDK is a tool set for developers to build high performance uh, network boxes, right? Proxies, uh, NATs, and other middle boxes. And the observation that the DPDK team made is in building software that has to make forwarding decisions for packets, over the last 20 years since fast ethernet came out, the amount of time that you have to make a decision to forward a packet has fallen dramatically. It's fallen three orders of magnitude, right? In 1995, you had you know, <coughs> six microseconds, seven microseconds per packet to make a decision. And today, with 100 gigabit Ethernet, you have 6.7 nanoseconds to make a decision. And this is a really, really worrying thing for the networking community because they have to build really, really efficient software to make these choices. Now, what if I were to look at storage media over the same period of time? Right? What if I were to look at how storage systems, the bits that we can use to build storage systems, have changed over this same period of time? This is what it looks like. Right? The line at the bottom, the flat yellow line, is the networking line. The line that overlays this on the top is disks moving progressively to SAS and SATA-based flash, moving to NVMe, moving to NVDIMM, and, and newer storage media. 
And so the amount of time and the way that we think about building storage systems is changing to look more and more like a networking implementation. We need to think about how to build storage in terms of the per request overhead of implementing these things. CPU is actually a scarce resource in this case. The other facet of storage that's, that's really, really interesting to think about is when I was working on virtualization years ago when we were working on building the Zen hypervisor, one of the reasons and one of the big values with virtual machines was being able to consolidate a, what was perceived as a wasted resource, right? The CPU, which for the last, I don't know, 10 or 20 years has basically cost $1,000, um, was idle a whole bunch of the time with physical machines. And so you'd have two CPUs in a, in a 1U chassis, you'd spend $2,000 on CPUs, you'd spend $2,000 on the rest of the chassis, right? This was the economic center of the data center. And so it made tons of sense to engineer everything around getting maximum value out of that CPU. Now, what we're seeing with, with Flash becoming fast and moving on to PCIe is this SSD, which is an example of a, of a high-performance NVMe device, is $3,000 list price, right? It's three times as expensive as the CPU. And so if I stick two or four of those in a box, suddenly the memory that I'm putting in the box actually costs more than the rest of the box, including the CPUs. And so again, I'm dealing with this complicated change in how the data center is laid out. Right? The flash has now become the economic center. And you should be purchasing and managing your systems that way. Right? On a resource that's over capable relative to the CPU and falling in price by 50% every 12 months or so, 12 to 18 months, you should be buying exactly as much of this as you need. You should be adding more of it as you need it. And you should be um, uh, exposing all of its performance as directly as you can to the rest of the system. Right? Building a RAID 5 out of these devices is very difficult to expose externally because you become constrained on both the CPU and the network aperture into the system. The last point that I want to emphasize uh, in terms of understanding enterprise storage is, and I'll talk about this a little bit more tomorrow, with enterprise uh, flash, the early systems, the flash was so expensive that to make them viable at all, we had to use all sorts of data compression techniques, deduplication and compression to make them useful and valuable. And it's really, important to understand the characteristics of the data in building these systems. So we went and looked at 11 VDI instances, 11 desktop machines over 12 months. And we studied how frequently the data was accessed. And this is indicative of other storage traces that we've looked at, that basically you know, the bulk of data is accessed in about a day. If you stretch out to a month of recency, right, you're still at only about 20% of the data. And within a year, you're still under half of the data that was stored on the disks of the system. And so it doesn't matter how great your compression or deduplication is in this range. If, if you're not accessing the data, why would you store it on super, super fast storage? Right? And so what we're seeing with NVDIMMs and PCIe flash and SSDs and spinning disks is storage is stratifying more than it has ever been. And it's a memory hierarchy. And so to get good value out of it, you should be using a storage system that composes all of the tools that it has at its disposal, all of the gear in the rack, to get efficiency. And that's what we've really tried to, uh, to push for. So this is a really high level view of the, of the Coho system. Uh, when I first started talking to, uh, to customers about it, I used to spend a ton of time talking about the, the technology involved. We, you know, we, we work really hard. Um, to, to expose the performance of, of these NVMe devices. So what we do is we have a balanced offering of NVMe, CPU, a 10 gig NIC, and so in a 2U system, you, <coughs> you have four 10 gig ports, and as you add additional nodes to the system, you add CPU and network in conjunction with the capacity. So as you scale out, you scale up performance as well as capacity. Uh, some of the really cool technical stuff that's lying in the middle of that is, is that we integrate deeply with an SDN switch, right? We, we integrate with an open flow switch to present all of this as a single IP address, right? All as a single NFS IP address that transparently scales in response to nodes being added. And so if you want to come by our booth and chat, I'm happy to go into a ton of detail about the gory technical underpinnings of this. Um, but in the end, the two points that really seem to win in this environment for our customers is the fact that it is simple to install, right? often installing in less than half an hour. And it's simple and cost effective to own. Right? Our customers buy us. Uh, many of our customers have petabytes and petabytes of large incumbent vendor storage. And they'll buy us off cycle. 
We won't compete on an RFP on the end of a five petabyte replacement. They'll bring us in partway through to solve a performance problem and move some VMs onto us and progressively scale the system out, gaining trust and confidence in the system as, as they go. And so it's really the focus on ease and efficiency that, that has been a big value for, for Coho. Anyways, I'd be delighted to have anyone come by the booth or, or DM me. I'm Andy Warfield on, on Twitter. Um, tomorrow I'm doing another talk in the same slot. Uh, tomorrow's talk will be about why your AFA is not a hot dog. Uh, so it'll have a slightly different flavor, I guess, to this one, maybe a little bit saltier. And, uh, and so come and see it. Also, I'm uh, giving a one-hour presentation uh, on Tuesday, tomorrow afternoon from 3.30 to 4.30 in Moscone West. And uh, this is about a new feature that we just announced on the product, which is the ability to extend the storage system using containers to move compute to run adjacent to the data. And this is quite different than the traditional storage use case. It's really exciting stuff, and I'd love to, to have you come in and listen to the talk there, or come by the booth and see a demo. Um, all right, thanks a lot.